Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you and we praise you for your word, which is the truth. We receive your word, written in our heart, written in our mind. We thank you for the revelation of it. We will be hearers and doers of it, and it will bring forth much fruit. In Jesus' name, amen. Please be seated if you would. We're sharing with you on the subject of conquering in your life. Tonight we're going to talk about conquering the tongue, conquering that little member, the tongue, which is extremely important if you're going to walk with the Lord, if you're going to see victory in your life. James 3, 2. For in many things we offend all. If any man offend not in word, the same is a perfect man, and able also to bridle the whole body. Words that you speak are important. Your tongue speaks words, and it is very important that we speak the things that God wants us to speak. He goes on in verse 3, and he says, Behold, we put bits in the horse's mouth, that they may obey us, turn about their whole body. Also the ships, which they be so great and are driven of fierce winds, yet are they turned about with a very small helm, whithersoever the governor listeth. Even so the tongue is a little member, and boasteth great things. Behold, how great a matter a little fire kindleth. It can cause all kinds of problems. The tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity. So is the tongue among our members, talking about those that aren't born again, out, coming out of our body, of course, which has not been changed. That it defileth the whole body and sets on fire the course of nature. Of course, if we're born again now, we don't have to yield unto that. We can now yield to the Spirit, remember. But a tongue without being yielded to the Spirit will be run by the body, and it will defile the whole body and set on fire the course of nature, and it's set on fire of hell. He goes on and down here, and he says down in verse uh, 9, he says, Therewith bless we God, even the Father, and therewith curse we men, which are made after the similitude of God. Otherwise, we're speaking one thing one time, and then we're speaking something else another time. Out of the same mouth proceedeth blessing and cursing. My brethren, these things ought not so to be. Our mouth should only be speaking that which is blessing. He does not want us to speak things that are cursing or that are contrary to the Word of God. We must understand that words are important. And we know that when we speak God's Word, we're speaking in the Spirit because in John 6, 63, He says, The words that I speak unto you, they're spirit and they're life. They're spiritual words. They're spirit. So when you speak God's Word or in line with God's Word, you are speaking in the Spirit to bring forth the things of God. That's what He wants us to do. It's important that we learn to speak the things that He says. We know that Jesus, of course, did this. Hebrews chapter 1, verse 3, says, well, speaking of Jesus, who in the, be in the brightness of His glory, the express image of His person, and upholding all things by the word of His power. When He had by Himself purged our sins, sat down on the right hand of the Majesty on high. When it says He upheld all things by the word of His power, the word for word is the word rhema, which means that which is spoken. So it's talking about upholding all things by that which was spoken, the speaking forth word, words, of His power, which is the word dunamis, meaning the word releases the power of God when you speak it because the power of God is resident in the Word, but it's going to be released and put into operation when you, the Word is spoken. And who is going to do the speaking of the Word? You and I are. You and I are going to speak the Word. That's what Jesus did. Notice, He was upholding all things, everything, by speaking forth God's Word that released the power of God. And that's what He wants for us as well. We see a scripture in Exodus, in chapter 4, in verse 15. He makes this statement. Thou shalt speak to him and put words in his mouth, and I will be with thy mouth and with his mouth, and I will teach you what you shall do. Notice, you put words, what kind of God's words, in your mouth, and he says, I'm going to be with your mouth. God will be with our mouth if we speak his words. We can't be speaking contrary to that. He's going to be with our mouth, but we need to be sure we're speaking the right thing. He's certainly not with our mouth, if we speak things that are contrary to the Word of God. This is why it's essential that you conquer the area of the tongue. Remember, the tongue is one of the members that you have, members of this physical body, and the body is a body of death. It is carnal. It does not want to do the right thing. So it's going to try to drive you to speak things that are contrary to the Word of God. 
out of the senses, out of what it wants to do, out of uh, things contrary to the Word. So the key is you're going to have to yield your tongue to God, and you're going to have to put your words that you speak forth, think about what you speak, and speak things that are in line with the Word of God, which is going to be speaking in the Spirit. God wants you to speak in the Spirit spiritual words that are going to release what God wants to bring forth. It's important if we're going to conquer our tongue because your tongue doesn't want to speak the right thing without you yielding it to the proper source. We see a scripture in Psalms 141, verse 3. He says, Set a watch, O Lord, before my mouth. Keep the door of my lips. Well, who's responsible now in the New Testament to do this? You and I are. You and I are to keep the door of our lips. Notice this, your lips are like a door. It's a doorway to let something out or let something, <clears throat> actually let something in because you'll sow things in you at the same time. But it's, your mouth is a releaser of things. It also can deposit things in you or in other people. The door of my lips, your lips are a doorway for things to go in and out. It's important that you and I speak the right things. We're going to release the things that God wants. Keep the door of my lips. Set a watch, a guard, this means, before my mouth. God wants us to guard our mouth. He wants us to keep the door of our lips so we're only releasing the right things because words have power. Words are carriers. They're not just things that you speak. They're carriers. They contain what you put in it and it will bring it forth. You can speak words of love and it's going to release that which would be loving towards someone. You can speak words of anger and hatred and meanness and it will release that spirit through it because words are carriers of whatever you put in it. So it's important that we set a watch before our mouth and we keep the door of our lips. One of the problems, of course, we see in Psalms 5, in verse 9, about men. He says, There is no faithfulness in their mouth. Their inward parts are very wicked. Their throat's an open sepulcher. They flatter with their tongue. They do all kinds of things, speaking things, but not speaking what God wants. No faithfulness in their mouth. God wants us to be faithful faithful. Part of you showing faithfulness to God is speaking the right words. If we don't speak the right words, we're not showing faithfulness to God in our mouth. That's what he's looking for. He's looking for you to speak the right things. In Psalms 12, we see over in verse 3, the Lord will cut off all the flattering lips and the tongue that speaks proud things, tongue that speaks things to flatter, try to manipulate people, try to get advantage in some way or that speaks proud things about all the things they've done, their accomplishments, uh, their boasting about what they've done. You can always tell that, just listen to what they say. They're always talking about I, 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 what I did, and, and carrying on about me and I all the time. They're speaking proud things. No, we don't want to do those things. He's going to cut that off. No, God wants us to speak the right things. And what was the problem with these people? Who have said, with our tongue will we prevail. Our lips are our own. Who is Lord over us? He says our lips are our own. Is that true in the New Testament? No. You're bought with a price. God bought the whole deal, including your, your body, your glorified God and your spirit and in your body. Remember it says that. He bought the whole thing and he's going to give you a new body. And we're going to get a glorified body, praise God. It's going to be changed. But we are belonging, we belong to the Lord. We're a purchased possession. Therefore, our lips are not our own. And he goes on and says, who's Lord over us? They didn't want the Lord to be Lord over them. That shows you something. If you yield your lips to God and you only speak what he says, then you're really making him Lord over you. And we want him to be Lord of our life. Many people confess he's Lord just to, just to get saved, get born again. But lordship of, is not more than just getting saved. It's seeing God truly be Lord in all aspects of our life. And if he's really Lord, then we're going to yield our lips under the Lord and only speak the things that he wants us to speak. In Psalms 15, we see in verse 1, who's going to abide in the tabernacle and who's going to dwell on thy holy hill? He that walks uprightly, works righteousness, and speaks truth in his heart. Notice, your walk's important, your works are important, and your words are important. Your walk, step by step, all the works that you're doing, <clears throat> and your what words are coming out of your mouth, speaking the truth in his heart. He that backbiteth not with his tongue, we can't be backbiting, speaking negatives. 
nor doing evil to the neighbor or taking up reproach against his neighbor. We should only be speaking things that edify, that build up, that strengthen, that bring blessing. Your tongue can release things depending upon what you put in it. Psalms 34, verse 13. Here we see a scripture. He says, Keep thy tongue from evil and thy lips from speaking guile or any kind of deceitful things. God wants to keep our tongue from evil. Speak the right things. Speak the word of God. Speak the things that he is doing for you. Don't speak what the enemy is doing for you. Speak what God is doing for you to bring it into being. Speak the things of the word of God. Speak the promises. Speak things that he wants you to speak. Speak what Jesus would speak in any situation. And we're not going to speak any that's going to be deceitful in any way. God wants us to yield our tongue to him. Psalms 35, verse 28. He says, My tongue shall speak of thy righteousness and of thy praise all the day long. Hey, he committed his tongue, what it's going to do all day long. He's not going to let, just do it for a moment and then let it just run later on. No, all day long he's going to talk about things that are righteous, his righteousness, that's going to be in line with his word of righteousness, and of his praise, all things that give praise and honor and glory to God, giving praise to him and things that are praiseworthy all day long. In fact, God wants you to get your mouth in operation in praising and rejoicing in the Lord. Psalms 35, 63, verse 5 says, my, my soul shall be satisfied as with marrow and fatness, and my mouth shall praise thee with joyful lips. If we're going to praise God, let's pray him with joyful lips. Not just kind of going through the motions because I know I should praise the Lord. Let's pray, praise him with joyful lips. A joy coming out of you as your eyes are upon the Lord, and you're praising and rejoicing in the Lord. You're not looking at your circumstances. Instead, your eyes are upon what the Lord is doing. We see in Psalms 37, in verse 30, he says this, The mouth of the righteous speaks wisdom, and his tongue talketh of judgment, or what is just, essentially. This is a word which refers to that which is just or is righteous, in line with his ways. It's just according to his justice, essentially, is what this word, this particular word, we've talked about this in the past, a word that refers to justice according to righteousness. So, you are going to speak wisdom, and you're going to speak of things that are just, in line with his word, that are always going to be according to his justice, whether it's judgment or whatever the situation is. We're always going to speak things that are in line with his ways. And then we see in Psalms 39, though, he comes down and he says, verse 1, I said, I will take heed to my ways that I sin not with my tongue. We want to conquer the tongue. It means we've got to stop it from sinning. Your tongue will sin if it speaks wrong words. I will keep or guard my mouth with a bridle while the wicked's before me. And who's around all the time? The angels are around, but also the demons are around. And they're listening, waiting for you to speak negatives so that you can release them to carry out destructive works. Well... We've got to guard our mouth. We've got to be sure that we don't sin with our tongue. Conquering the tongue is a very important thing for every believer. In fact, if you will do it, then you'll start speaking right words. Look at the great promise that we see here. Psalms 45, the latter part of this verse says, My tongue is the pen of a ready writer. What does that mean? A pen is um, something that you're marking, marking something down or writing it down of a ready writer, like a skillful scribe, someone who's recounting this, it refers to rehearsing this, and declaring what has been said. So your tongue is as the marking stick of a ready writer, like a skillful scribe, somebody who's recounting this and writing this in the realm of the Spirit. So it means you're writing things in the Spirit when you speak. Whether it's something you want or whether it's something that you don't want, nonetheless, you're putting something in operation. So your tongue is writing something. It's the pen of a ready writer. We want to be sure that we're writing the right things. We're having the things written in the Spirit that are going to bring the promises and the blessings and accomplish the things God wants instead of being a vessel of the devil or speaking things that would hinder God from performing His Word. Words of doubt, words of unbelief, words of negativism, words of poor old me, depression, negatives, all kinds of things. They will only yield yourself to the enemy. He goes on and says, Thou art fairer than the children of men. Grace is poured into thy lips. What would grace be? God's favor. And what's going to be grace? God's words are gracious words. Therefore God hath blessed thee forever. 
That means if we'll pour the right thing into our lips and speak it forth, it will bring God's blessings. And if we'll do it all the time, we're going to be blessed forever. We'll take some of that. We want to be blessed. But you know, it doesn't just happen automatically. It all depends on whether we're speaking the right thing. Psalms 56, verse 5. It talks about the enemies here and what the enemy seeks to do. Every day they rest my words. All their thoughts are against me for evil. They tr the devil tries to get to your words. He wants you to speak wrong words. He wants you to have wrong thoughts coming into you so you think wrong things. Words. They're trying to get to your words. You've got to l yield to God and speak right words and don't let the enemy get a hold of you to speak wrong words. He tries to drive you to speak words, try to get you to react to situations out of the flesh and just speak negative things. You get angry or upset or you know, frustrated or whatever, uh, or you begin to speak negative things, speak, you know, responding out of the flesh instead of thinking before you speak. And we can get ourselves in a lot of trouble, and we're actually lead, lead, yielding to the enemy. Now, if some negative things have happened in your life, we've got to watch the things we speak talks about in Psalms 64.3, those who wet their tongue like a sword, bend their bows to shoot their arrows, even bitter words. Now, if people are speaking bitter words at you, it can have effect upon you and wound you if you don't deal with it properly. Now, the Bible says no weapon formed against you shall prosper. We can condemn every tongue that rises against us. It depends on how we handle it. If we resist that and don't receive that negativism and speak against it, it will not have an effect. But if we receive what it has done, what it is speaking, it will have an effect upon us, bitter words. Well, how about if you speak bitter words as well? It'll be destructive to others. And so, here they're speaking, there's bitter words, shooting in secret at the perfect. Suddenly do they shoot at him in fear and eyes. The people out there will speak bitter, evil words against a person. It talks about how they search out iniquities and they accomplish a diligent search, both the inward thought of every one of them and the heart is deep. This is the enemies that are trying to do evil things. But God says he's going to shoot at them with an arrow. Suddenly, they're going to be wounded. How does God shoot arrows? It's with words. His words are like shooting arrows that are going forth, smiting the enemy. Because what do we war with? Our mouth. So they shall make their own tongue to fall upon themselves. Because if you don't speak right words, whatever you sow, you're going to reap, right? Whatever you give out is going to be given back to you. You speak wrong words, it's going to come back upon you and fall upon yourself. It's going to happen to them, but that's also will happen to us if we speak bitter words. Now, if people have done evil things to you and you've spoken bitter words in the past, forgive them. Let it go. Change and decide, I'm not going to speak any bitter words again. I'm only going to speak words that are going to minister life. I'm only going to speak words that are going to be edifying and are going to bring forth the Word of God, the things that God wants me to speak. I'm not going to speak evil, bitter words, or negative things. Psalm 71, verse 23. My lips shall greatly rejoice when I sing unto thee in my soul which thou hast redeemed. God wants you to greatly rejoice. When you sing praise and worship to God, put your whole being into singing and have your focus upon Him. You're greatly rejoicing as you sing unto Him. Your eyes are upon Him and you're really thinking about who he is and all the things he's done, you're going to rejoice because he has accomplished everything for us. He's redeemed us. He's took our sins. He set us free from bondage. He's given us authority over the devil. He's given us the word of God. He's, we have eternal life. We can live forever with him. We're, we're born again. We're not under the dominion of the devil. We're not on our way to hell. We're on our way to heaven. I mean, we can greatly rejoice forever. And you think about the songs we're singing in line with the word, and you start thinking about what those words say. You think, greatly rejoice as you're singing them. My tongue also shall talk of thy righteousness all the day long. We saw a scripture on that already. For they're confounded, for they're brought into shame that seek my hurt. That shows you something. The devils are trying to get you to speak wrong things and bring shame and seek to hurt you and wound you, but instead you're not going to give place to them. You're going to keep speaking righteousness. You're going to keep on speaking the right things. You're not going to let the devil get to you in any way. Psalms 109. Psalms 109 here in verse 2. For the mouth of the wicked and the mouth of the deceitful are opened against me. They've spoken against me with a lying tongue. What do you do if someone has spoken against you? You forgive them. You forgive them immediately. Know this, the devil. You bind those demon spirits. 
and you resist what, you don't receive what they say so that they're not going to have effect upon you. And you speak forth the word of God, what is the truth, to deal successfully with those that are trying to bring attacks against you. At the same time, remember, you can't have negative attitudes. You want to always speak right. Remember, we love our enemies. We bless those that curse us. We do good to those that do evil to us. We are going to never, never retaliate. Whatever they spoke to me, I'm not going to speak back to them. I'm only going to speak what God wants me to speak so that I minister the things that God wants. Psalms 119, 171. Psalms 119, verse 171. My lips shall utter praise when thou hast taught me thy statutes. You know, the more you get taught the word of God, the more the words in you, the more you see the things of God, the more you want to praise him. You're going to praise and worship God. You see the great things that he's done and he gives you revelation, open the eyes, your understanding, writing the word in your heart and mind, see all he's done. You're going to be praising him more and more. My tongue shall speak of thy word for all thy commandments are righteousness. What are we going to speak? Of God's word. There's nothing else to speak of. What's the world, the world got to offer? Nothing. All it's got is a bunch of foolishness out there, a bunch of things that are shameful, a bunch of sin, a bunch of pride, a bunch of uh, all these things of the world that are not going to do any good whatsoever. They're not profiting us, profiting us anyway in our life. But you've got to watch your tongue, though, because what happens if you speak wrong words? Proverbs 6, 2 says you're snared. It means you have been trapped, set a trap. You've been caught, essentially, with the words of your mouth. And then he goes on and says, you're taken. This word actually means to be captured. You're taken captive. You've been captured with the words of your mouth. So you can be snared. You can be captured by the words of your mouth. Well, how did the devil get a hold of me? Well, did you speak words that let him come in and capture you and take, to take control of you, affecting you in some way? You've got to watch. We can be taken captive with the words of our mouth. God wants us to be sure we only speak the right things. Proverbs 7, verse 16 tells you some of the things that God hates because this is a list of the six things that he hates and the seventh's an abomination to him. And in that list it says a lying tongue. A lying tongue, one that speaks lies or deception or anything. And from God's standpoint, anytime you speak something contrary to the word, it's a lie. It's not the truth. It's deception. So it's not just speaking something that's actually a lie, like I chose to speak a falsehood, but when you think about it, anything contrary to the word is a lying tongue or a deceiving tongue, something that we're speaking that is wrong, that is, that is going to deceive ourselves. In fact, we can deceive ourselves if we don't speak the right things. And we think over in the, in the New Testament, in James chapter 1, down in verse 26. If any man among you seems to be religious and bridles not his tongue, he doesn't watch what he's speaking, What's he do? He deceives his own heart because the words are affecting you of what you spoke. It says the man's religion is vain. We want to be sure that we're only speaking the things that God wants us to speak. Conquering your tongue is essential if you are going to live a victorious life. Proverbs 8, verse 6. Hear, for I will speak of excellent things, and the opening of my lips shall be right things. You want to speak things that are excellent. You want to speak things that are right. Speak things in line with the Word of God. Verse 7, for my mouth shall speak truth. Well, what's the truth? The Word. Wickedness is an abomination to my lips. I don't want to speak anything that's contrary to the Word. It's wickedness. It's to be, you think of it as an abomination to my lips. No way, it's not going to come across my mouth. All the words of my mouth are unrighteousness. There's nothing forward or perverse in them. Boy, we want our words to be like this because this is going to bring great blessing in your life. In the things that God hates, in Proverbs 8, verse 13, he says, the fear of the Lord is to hate evil, pride, arrogancy, the evil way, and the froward mouth. A mouth that is speaking perverse things, things that are contrary to what God would have us. He hates that. He wants us to speak the right things. Now, what happens if we do speak the right things? The Bible says in Proverbs 10, 11, the mouth of the righteous man is a well of life, it's going to release life. You're going to release life because you're speaking the Word of God. It's going to release all that life brings, whether it's healing, whether it's peace, whether it's prosperity, whether it's victory, whether it's deliverance, whether it's some wisdom, whatever it might be. It's going to be like a well of life that's going to come up out of you. Verse 13, In the lips of him that has understanding, wisdom's found. 
because that's what you'll be speaking. You have understanding? You're going to be speaking the wisdom of God. We're going to, that's what God's looking for. But then he goes down to verse 14, and he says, Wise men lay up knowledge, but the mouth of the foolish is near destruction, because it's sowing seeds that are going to bring destruction. See, otherwise, what you've been speaking, you've been reaping. Because whatever you sow with your mouth, you're going to reap. The Bible says, whatever man sows, he's going to reap. God's not mocked. You sow to the flesh, of the flesh you reap corruption. You sow to the spirit of the spirit, you reap life everlasting. You know, whatever you're speaking is what you're going to get. Verse 19. In the multitude of words, there wanteth not sin. Thou shalt not escape sin, is what it talks about down here, or uh, it's not cease the sin, not sin. But he that refrains his lips is wise. So that tells you something. You and I have to learn to refrain our lips, hold back our lips from speaking wrong things. When a wrong situation comes and you just want to rise up and speak some things that, you know, they're not the best, but are just kind of trying to drive you to, you know, to react to that situation especially. God says if we are wise, we're going to refrain our lips. We're not going to let our lips just start being speaking things that are contrary to what God wants. Because we're going to conquer this tongue. We're not going to let our tongue set on fire the course of hell and defile people, defiling, doing damage to them. No. We're only going to speak right things. The tongue of the just or the righteous is as choice silver because that's something that's precious because you're speaking the right thing. This is what God wants for you in your life. Verse 31, he says, The mouth of the just brings forth wisdom, but the froward tongue shall be cut out. Now, that's quite a judgment. We want to be sure that we're only speaking the wisdom of God, speaking the things that God wants. Proverbs 11 down in verse 9, he says, A hypocrite with his mouth destroys his neighbor, but through knowledge shall the just be delivered, because we're going to speak the word of God. We're not going to be a hypocrite and destroy our neighbor. Otherwise, we act one way. What a hypocrite does, he acts one way to, at one point to someone when they see him, and then he's a different way away from that person. Like the guy who comes, you know, he's real nice and joyful at church, and everything, everybody thinks, oh, this guy's a great guy and he's mean as ever at home or whatever, he's a hypocrite. He's putting on a face, you know. Hypocrite with his mouth destroys his neighbor. He can speak nice things to him and then turn around and speak evil things behind his back. Be sure that you don't speak one thing one minute and then go and speak another thing another minute. Verse 11, By the blessing of the upright the city is exalted, but it's overthrown by the mouth of the wicked. That shows you. One of the factors that brings down a city or brings down a nation is people's words because they're speaking wrong words. The mouth of the wicked, they're giving place to the enemy and it's instead of bringing blessing, it's causing it to be overthrown by the devil as he has place. In Proverbs chapter 12, verse 6, the Bible says this, The words of the wicked are to lie in wait for blood but the mouth of the upright shall deliver them. See, you've got to learn how to speak what he says so you can get delivered from whatever attacks coming against you, whatever temptation, whatever trial, whatever pressures coming against you at that very moment. We need to learn to speak what God says. Verse 13, the wicked are snared by the transgression of his lips. That's right, they get taken. But the just shall come out of trouble. A man will be satisfied with good by the fruit of his mouth, Otherwise, you speak the right things, you're going to be satisfied with it because you're going to see good things come to pass. And the recompense of the man's hand shall be rendered unto him. Down in verse 17, he says this, He that speaketh truth shows forth righteousness. See, we're to be doing righteousness. One of the ways that we are doing righteousness is by speaking righteousness, speaking truth that shows forth righteousness. But a false witness, he's, he is, shows deceit. There is that speaketh like the piercings of a sword. It can be damaging like a sword. But the tongue of the wise is help. Now, you're not going to speak things that are going to be damaging to people. You're going to speak things that are going to be healing to people, that are bringing answers, bringing life, bringing what God purposes. You know, God wants us to be a vessel for good, not a vessel for the enemy. The lip of truth shall be established forever. That tells you something, because remember, our words are written in the Spirit. They're established forever. Your words are important. But a lying tongue is but for a moment. 
In fact, he even talks about that further down here in verse 22. Lying lips are abomination to the Lord. We just don't want us to speak lying, deceiving, any things that are wrong. He wants us to be sure that we're speaking words that are right. Proverbs 13, look at verse 2. A man shall eat good by the fruit of his mouth. Otherwise, the fruit of your mouth is affecting you and what you're eating, what you're partaking of. Because what you're sowing with your mouth is going to bring something back to you. Man's eating good by the fruit of his mouth. So we want to speak the right things. He that keeps his mouth keeps his life. You guard it, and you're going to be able to... Actually, the first word, keepeth, is the word natsar in the Hebrew, which actually means to watch over it. It's guard in the sense of watching over it. He that watches over his mouth keeps, or this is shamar, which means guards his life because your mouth's going to affect your life, whether you're going to have good things coming or evil things. But he that opens wide his lips, he's not watching over his mouth. He's just letting it just go whatever, or speak whatever comes to him, shall have destruction. No, we don't want to see destruction. That means your words can be seeds that are going to bring destruction in our life. Proverbs chapter 14, down here in verse 3. In the mouth of the foolish is a rod of pride. Speaks a lot of things that are foolish. He's all speaking out of self. Parade of pride. But at the lips of the wise shall pervert, preserve them. Notice, it shall bring forth preservation in your life. Again, this is the same word shamar, which means to guard you, preserve you, keep you in some aspect. In Proverbs chapter 15, verse 1, A soft answer turneth away wrath, but grievous words stir up anger. That's why you don't want to get yourself in strife or in anger. You don't want to speak, raising your voice, getting into strife. Soft answer turns away wrath. Don't speak grievous words or you're going to stir up anger in people. Think about what you're saying. How, how is that going to be affecting the person? Will it be a grievous words are going to stir up anger? Then you want to watch. That's not the, way to, that's not the thing to say. You've got to pick your time sometimes when you say certain things. You've got to be sure that you have wisdom. You say things when someone's all upset and so forth, are you going to be able to get through to them? To them? Most of the time, you're not. You need to speak to certain things to them when they're calm and when you can relate to them, where they can, they're, they're more thinking correctly instead of reacting from the moment. That's why we've got to watch the words that we speak. The tongue of the wise uses knowledge aright, but the mouth of fools pours out foolishness. So we're going to use knowledge right. We're going to speak the right thing. Fools, they just pour out all kind of foolishness. They just speak whatever comes their way. Watch your words. The wholesome tongue is a tree of life, but perverseness therein is a breach in the spirit. Talking about perverseness in your tongue. It's going to be a breach, like a breaking in the spirit. Instead of seeing what God wants to bring forth, you're yielding to the enemy. Verse 7, the lips of wise disperse knowledge. What does God want you to do? Give out knowledge of the word of God. Give out truth. Give scriptures. Give truths to people. That's what they need to hear. The heart of the foolish doeth not so. So we want to be wise, and we're going to be knowledge dispersers. Verse 23. A man has joy by the answer of his mouth. When you speak the right things, you're going to have joy within because you know you spoke the things that God wants you to speak. Instead of just speaking out of the moment and reacting you're not going to have any joy when you speak negatives. You don't want to ever speak words that put someone down, put them in their place, you know, or whatever. Even if they're wrong, you don't want, you want to watch how you speak to people. You know, speak something, put them, put them down. They aren't going to receive that. You know, you can maybe speak something that's right, but it can't be received because of the way you said it. We've got to be sure we say things with tact, say things in a right way, by the way we do it by the answer of his mouth, a word spoken in due season, how good it is. Otherwise, you've got to be sure you're speaking the right thing at the right times. Sometimes, it may not be the right time for you to speak. Then you hold your peace. Verse 26, thoughts of the wicked are abomination of the Lord, but the words of the pure are pleasant words. It means those who are pure and those who are clean, they're going to speak pleasant words or Words that are going to be bringing forth what God's favor, kindness, delightfulness, His blessing, things that are good in the sight of the Lord. Proverbs 16, verse 23, tells us something that's very important. 
The heart of the wise teaches his mouth. Instead of just having your mouth react to the situation, that's just coming out of the flesh. You want to teach your mouth and prepare your mouth what to speak in situations. Don't just react. Teach your mouth what to speak. The heart of the wise teaches his mouth and adds learning to his lips. Pleasant words are as a honeycomb, sweet to the soul and health to the bones. If you're speaking the right word, there's going to be something that's going to minister to their soul, good things, and you're going to minister health to their bones, because words, notice, they have effect upon the soul, and they also have effect upon the body, such as the bones. That's why you can actually have damage. People speak a lot of bitter words and unforgiveness and stuff. They get arthritis coming in their bones because they speak wrong things. Words have allowed the demons to come in. So you remember, angels hearken to the voice of the word, but hearkens contrary to the word. Demons, and they're going to come in. Pleasant words will be health to the bones, but wrong words will bring a destruction to the bones. That's why we've got to watch the things that we're saying. We're going to conquer this tongue because we're, going to, we're giving it to God, we're yielding it to God, and we're going to speak his word in the spirit. Proverbs 17, verse 27. He that hath knowledge spareth his words. Otherwise, you just don't just carry on, just blurt out, and just talk and talk and talk. Talkativeness. He doesn't want you to be overly talkative. A man of understanding is of an excellent spirit. So if you have knowledge, you're going to spare your words. You're going to restrain, hold back, because you understand that words are important. So you, and you're going to understand you're going to be judged for all your words. Therefore, you want to be sure that you're only speaking right words. So we're going to think about the words that we speak. Proverbs 18.4, the words of a man's mouth are as deep waters and the wellspring of wisdom as a flowing brook. Deep waters, they come from deep within, and they also will affect a person deep within as well. Wisdom is the spring forth from you. In verse 6, the fool's lips enters into contention. He gets in strife. His mouth calls for strokes or for blows. You know, it gets into fights. Now, we shouldn't get into strife and get into fights or fighting with our mouth, words, and so forth. We shouldn't get into negative things. Watch how you speak. Even if someone did something wrong, you want to speak words of correction, speak words if you have to confront them on things, but watch how you get into it. Don't enter into strife. You need to speak the truth. Don't ever call for retaliation, blows, or some kind of a, a negative evil thing against some, somebody. You know, some people are quick to say, well, you're going to be cursed and all that. Well, that's not the thing to say, you know. You call them, is that going to help them? No. Call them to repentance. Say, you know, hey, if you'll just change and you'll just do the word, do these things, God will bring his blessings. Give them something good to think about instead of just pour a negative on top of them and just kind of put them down and smite them. That isn't going to solve any problems. That's, not, that's a lack of wisdom. A fool's mouth is a destruction. And the, his lips are the snare of his soul. What happens when we speak wrong things? It snares our soul. The enemies come in and snare us. Verse 8, the words of a talebearer are his wounds. This is a guy who's murmuring and whispering. And we don't want to be a murmur, a, a murmur, a whisperer, a gossiper, any of these things. They'll be like wounds. And they go under the innermost parts of the belly. That's why our words, you, that's why don't ever speak sarcastic words. You say, well, I didn't mean it that way. It doesn't matter. The words will go in and they'll do damage to people. Sarcasm is of the devil. A lot of Christians are, think that it's cute to be sarcastic and speak these kind of things. Well, I didn't really mean that. Oh, no. You just wounded somebody. Your words are carriers of what you put in them. Proverbs 18, 13. He that answers a matter before he hears it, it's folly and shame unto him. Otherwise, learn to listen before you go carrying on and reacting. You don't want to, you know, some people just react. Why? Because they want to say what they want to say. They want to say their piece. Instead of even willing to listen to what the person's saying. No, it's folly and a shame unto him. Verse 20 tells us, A man's belly shall be satisfied with the fruit of his mouth. You're going to be satisfied with whatever's coming out of your mouth, whether it's good or bad. And with the increase of his lips shall he be filled. We want to be filled with the right things, not wrong things. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. The tongue 
is, has power, and it's putting things in operation. They that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. That's why God wants us to speak the right words. Look at Proverbs 21, verse 23. This is of the necessity if you're going to conquer the tongue. Proverbs 21, 23 says, Whoso keeps guards his mouth and his tongue, keeps guards his soul from troubles. Again, we've seen this time and time again. Your words will affect your body. Your words will affect your soul, which is your will, your intellect, and emotions. That's why it's going to affect you. You've got to watch. You speak wrong words. You can have, be, get into a bad mood and all these things. It's the effects, a lot of times, of your own words. It can be coming from your mind. It also can be coming from your words and things that you've done. We want to be sure that we only speak what God wants. Verse 25. The desire of the slothful killeth him for his... Oh, this is the wrong scripture here. Um, I think it's the yeah, opposite of that. Anyway, uh, Proverbs 26, 22. This is one about wounds. He says, the words of a talebearer are as wounds that go down to the innermost part of the belly. We saw a scripture already similar to that. Now, it's interesting, in Proverbs 31, it's talking about the virtuous woman. And look what it says in Proverbs 31, verse 26, and talking about the, the traits of a virtuous woman. She opens her mouth with wisdom, and in her tongue is the law of kindness. I mean, it's all women. You should be speaking with wisdom to men, of course, as well, but the virtuous woman, in her tongue is the law of kindness. She's not going to be harsh. She's not going to be demeaning. She's not going to be putting down. Not going to be condescending. Not going to be kind of sharp. No, you don't want to speak kind of sharply out of frustration, harshness, negativism. The law of kindness. Minister to people what you want ministered back unto you. Minister to people what God would speak to them. He's not going to sit there and have you speak negative kinds of things. Ecclesiastes tells us something pretty important in chapter 5, verse 2. Be not rash with thy mouth, quick with your mouth, you know, or hasty. Let not thine heart be hasty to utter anything before God. Watch what you say before God. Oh, it didn't matter. Oh, it does matter to God. For God's in heaven and thou upon earth, therefore let thy words be few. Watch that you don't just carry on. Just talk and talk and talk and talk to God. Be sure you're only speaking the right things. What are you going to speak to him? His word. You're going to put him in remembrance of his word. You're going to pray his word. You're going to do the things he says. You're going to speak things that, that are important. And you're not, certainly not going to carry on complaining, griping, having negative attitudes. And that's not going to get you anywhere at all. He goes on down here in verse uh, 6. Suffer not thy mouth to cause thy flesh to sin. Notice. Your mouth, which is one of your members, what can cause your flesh to sin because you speak wrong words. Neither say thou before the angel was an error. Oh, it was an angel. It was an angel, it was an error what I spoke. It won't work. Once the words have been spoken, they're released, they're gone. They're doing something. You can't take them back. Just like water over the dam, it's gone. You can't come back. Those words have already gone out, and either, you, either the angels are hearkening to it or the devils are hearkening to it. You spoke those evil words at someone, you did some damage, it's already been done. You know, it's already happened. So you're not going to say it was an error and think that it's, you know, I can get it back. Wherefore should God be angry at thy voice and destroy the work of thine hands? That's quite a statement. If he doesn't like the things you speak, it says it's even talking about destroying the work of your hands. That's like a judgment coming because we're not speaking the right words. Words are important to God. Ecclesiastes 8, or 10, is uh, verse 12. The words of a wise man's mouth, mouth are gracious. Pour grace into our lips, remember? But the lips of a fool will swallow up himself. He'll swallow up himself. Why? Because he's going to be damaged by him. Because he's speaking things that are contrary to the word. See, your words are so important. In fact, Look at the statement that's made in Job chapter 6 and verse 25. He says, How forcible are right words. Right words will release God's force, His power. How powerful have been the right words. What this is talking about. You're going to talking about putting force or power, releasing, and they can have effect. And this way it was talking about a negative thing where it can cause damage to someone. That releases force or releases power. 
You speak right words, it's going to be good. You speak wrong words, it's going to have a negative effect. Because he was involved in arguing here. What is your arguing or proof? He's so he's saying, you speak right words, it's going to release force and power and the right things that God wants to bring forth. In fact, look at the statement that is made about Samuel. Samuel was one who spoke words, and here is the testimony about Samuel. 1 Samuel 3, 19. Samuel grew, the Lord was with him, and did let none of his words fall to the ground that came to pass. Now, why would that be? Because he spoke the words that God gave him to speak. That's why they came to pass. He didn't speak words that were contrary to what God would want him to speak. That's a tremendous testimony. You and I need to be speaking right words. Start saying the things of what God has done for you. Start declaring and decreeing the things he's accomplished. You see over here in Psalms 107, verse 2, it says, Let the redeemed of the Lord say so, whom he's redeemed from the hand of the enemy. You declare it. I've been redeemed from the enemy. I've been purchased. The enemy has no dominion over me. I have been redeemed. You want to speak right words. Instead of confessing weakness, what should we be confessing? The Bible says, Joel chapter 3, and verse 10, let the weak say, I am strong. Start declaring who you are in Christ. Start speaking things into being. Don't be speaking negative things. That's not going to help you. You start speaking what God wants you to speak. You're going to start declaring who you are in Christ and uh, speaking the truth according to what Jesus has done for you. Here's another scripture. Isaiah 33, verse 24. Should we be going around saying, I'm sick? Look what it says. The inhabitants shall not say, Isaiah 33, 24, I am sick. What? The inhabitants, talking about those that are dwelling with God, shall not say, I'm sick. Why? You're just agreeing with what the devil is doing against you. Why would I not want to say, why would I want to say something different? Because you want to agree with what God's doing for you to get rid of your sickness. Now, people say, does that mean I never can communicate the fact that I have a physical problem? No, you can communicate it, but you can communicate it in a different way. You can say, well, I'm this, a sickness disease has come against my body and I am fighting against it as I am taking hold of healing and I am casting out these spirits. You can communicate that. Or if you want prayer, say, I want prayer. Well, what's going on? You, there's nothing wrong with it. communicating that. Say, well, there's a sickness that has attacked my body. I'm not agreeing that I'm sick. I'm not accepting and, and saying, accepting this, this is the way I'm going to be. No. Instead, I am, I am coming and saying, you know, I'm coming to receive healing. Instead of declaring the fact that this is the way I am, I may have this attack coming against me, but this is what I'm going to become because I'm going to take hold of healing. I'm going to cast out these demons. I'm going to see God bring forth what he wants. So we don't want to declare in an agreement sense of what the enemy is doing. We want to speak what God is doing, speak into being his healing coming to pass. You know, I hear some people go around and say, well, I'm sick. I want to get on. I'm so sick today. It would be better to say, sickness disease has attacked my body, and I would like you to pray for me as I'm taking hold of healing, and I'm casting out the spirits, and I'd like your agreement with me, or you want to help minister to me. There's not sitting there, nothing wrong with that, but you're communicating, you have a need, and there's nothing wrong with communicating a need, but let's, let's communicate it and say it in such a way that we're in faith, taking hold of what God has, instead of just, I gave, you know, the enemy did it, and I've, I've accepted it. I've agreed with him, but I'm sick. That's why it says that. Let's, instead, we should be declaring what God's doing for us, at the same time communicating, we, there's nothing wrong with talking about we have to attack against our body. It's no problem whatsoever. So we want to be wise in the what we speak. So that's quite an interesting scripture. It's even quite interesting here in the tithing scripture in Malachi chapter 3. Malachi chapter 3 in verse 8 and following where it talks about they were robbing God and their tithes and offerings, and they were cursed with a curse, they robbed the whole nation. And he tells them about bringing the tithes into the storehouse, how he's going to open up the windows of heaven and pour out these blessings and rebuke the devourer and not destroy the fruits of your ground and, and final, not cast your fruit before the time in the field. And he says that na all nations will call you blessed. You're going to be a delightsome land because you're bringing your tithes and offerings to him. But then he says, your words have been stout against me. They were speaking stout 
stout words against him. Or this would be like hard words against him. Hardened words. Negative words against him. Saith the Lord, yet say, why, why, why have we spoken so much against thee? He said, it's vain to serve God. And what profit is that we've kept this ordinance and we've walked mournfully before the Lord of hosts. Eventually they're saying, hey, we didn't see anything happen. And so they're kind of saying, this didn't do me any good. Uh, that's the wrong thing to say. Everything that you do in line with God's word is doing you good whether you realize it or not. It can be keeping you from evil things. It can be releasing blessings that you don't even know about. It can be sowing seeds that are going to bring forth the blessing in the future. Maybe it hasn't manifested yet. But nonetheless, don't ever say it's vain to serve God. And what profit is this that we've kept this ordinance? And they were walking mournfully because they weren't seeing what they wanted. You know, a lot of times things don't happen until we really walk in line with God's way and really prove and show forth that we're really following him with a heart that's before him, right? But they were speaking negative words, and that is a great mistake. God wants us to speak right words. Now, we see over in the New Testament, over in Ephesians, talking about these words, conquering the tongue. Look what it says in Proverbs, or Ephesians 4, 29. Ephesians 4, 29, he says this, Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth. We don't want to speak corrupt, rotten, not fit, no good, worthless communication or speech, this means, out of your mouth. But that which is good to the use of edifying, does it minister? Does it edify people? Does it build them up? Is it ministering grace and favor to the hearers? Or is it putting them down? Is it pulling them down? Is it speaking a bunch of negatives? Is it, is it going to help in some way, encourage them in the right things of God? We need to be speaking right words. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 4 tells us something. That we're not supposed to be speaking filthiness, which is obscenity. God does not want you speaking any obscene words, swear words, or any of these kind of things. Nor foolish talking. He doesn't want us to speak any kind of foolish talking, just carrying on a bunch of foolish, worldly talking. Nor jesting, which is really pleasantly in humor. Have you ever seen God tell a joke in the Bible? Do you ever see him doing a lot of humorous things and just kind of, you know, telling things that get you to be humorous? No. It's of the world. It's not of God. He doesn't do those things. Jesting. Jesting. This can be in a negative sense, like a, they call it ribaldry, or in a bad sense, low jesting. But also, it also refers to facetiously or humor or pleasantry. Just trying to get somebody to, you know, laugh to people, you know, and all these kind of things. That's not saying that we can't, you know, laugh. But we're going we're to laugh at the things that what the, the wicked's trying to do, destructive things. Are we going to laugh at things? You know, there can be things that can be funny that aren't negative against a person. But at the same time, we don't want to be doing jesting, pleasantry, you know, all these kind of things, humorous things, just to try to get people to respond to that. That means all these, these so-called Christian comedians? Is that of the Lord? No. But there's a lot of them out there, aren't there? They do that. what they do? They brought the world in and they said, we're going to Christianize it and be like a comedian like everybody else. Instead of casting the spirits out of them, what they should have done, and turned away from it, they just decided to Christianize the things of the world. Do we see any Christian comedians in the Bible? No. It's serious business with God. He's not, this is not a joking matter. It's not a jesting matter. And yet so many people want to make a joke out of everything. You ever been around a guy who makes a joke out of everything? You know? He always has to be something that he's got to get, get you joking about. That's not a good thing. That's not what God wants. That's foolish talking and jesting, which are not convenient. He's not like those kind of things. Therefore, we want to be sure that we're only speaking the things that God wants. What else does he say about our mouth? Your mouth is like a sword. You're going to speak forth. The sword of the Spirit, which is the word, the rhema, the spoken word of God. You're going to use your mouth to speak against the enemy instead of letting your tongue speak against you or put demons in operation against you by speaking negatives. Let's put our mouth in operation to smite the enemy. Let's let it be a vessel for God 
to destroy the works of the enemy in our life. Look at Isaiah, chapter 49, down in verse 2. He has made my mouth like a sharp sword. Your mouth's like a sword to smite those enemies. That's why we're going to smite those enemies as we speak forth the word of God, and they're going to be put underfoot. We're going to release God's power. You see, you have a mouth that is to speak words. In fact, that's how you put your faith in operation. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, down here in verse 13, says, We having the same spirit of faith, according to written, I believe, therefore have I spoken. Why are we speaking? Because speaking releases what you believe. You believe the word in your heart, you speak it to release it, to put it in operation. We believe, therefore we speak, because that's the way you release things. You war with your mouth to release authority and power. You speak with your mouth to release the things that God wants, to speak them into being, to pray the word of God, to take hold of things. You're going to put your mouth. With your mouth is the way you function in the realm of the Spirit, to release things that come into manifestation. That's how God did everything. He spoke words. Let there be light. There was light. Let there be a firmament in the heavens. God said, God said, God said, God said. In Genesis chapter 1, over and over, words release things. That's why our words are so important. In fact, interesting scripture in Philemon, verse 6, a song that we sing sometimes, let the communication of your faith may become effectual or active by the acknowledging of every good thing which is in you in Christ Jesus. Or more literally, this means that the communication of faith will become active and effectual in the precise and correct knowledge of every good thing that's in you in Christ Jesus because you are speaking this into being as you're communicating it. You're speaking it into being. So as we are acting on the word, we're going to speak the things, everything that belongs to us, every good thing. That's all the promises of God, all the things God has said about us, our inheritance everything of who you are in Christ, what you have in Christ. All those things, start speaking them into being. Start declaring who you are. Don't declare things that are contrary to those things. You want to speak the things that God wants you to speak. Over in Colossians, chapter 4. Conquering the tongue is so important. Look at verse 6. Let your speech be always with grace, always. That means there isn't any time for your speech to be contrary to grace or favor. Seasoned with salt, you may know how to answer every man. You see, when we learn to speak the right words, we'll know how to answer. Instead of, anyway, many times just speaking things and getting our foot in our mouth, you know, and speaking wrong kind of things and wishing we'd have never opened our mouth because we did some damage because we spoke some things we shouldn't have spoke that didn't minister life and administered negative and caused problems and stirred up things. That was a lack of wisdom on our part. We want to be sure that we're only speaking the things that God wants. But your mouth, of course, is so important because what you believe, as we already saw that scripture, look what it says over here in Romans 10, 8. What says it? The word, that's the rhema, the spoken word, is nigh thee. Well, how's it going to, where's it going to be? It's going to be in your mouth and in your heart. The word gets in your heart and it comes out of your mouth, the word of faith which we preach, and what's it going to produce? You're going to confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, and you're going to believe in your heart God's raised him from the dead. You're going to be saved. Because with the heart man believes unto righteousness, and with his mouth confession is made unto or re resulting in salvation. You're going to, your mouth's a releaser, see. It's going to release this and bring this into manifestation. You see, the words that you're speaking are not only releasing things, they can be depositing things within you. They're going to be very important. You want to speak the things that God wants you to speak. Look over in James. We saw this in 126, but we'll look at it again. The guy who seems to be religious and bridles not his tongue, but deceives his own heart. How does he deceive his own heart? By his tongue, the words that he's speaking with his tongue. That tells you something. Words that you speak not only are being released out of you to the hearers, but it's also being coming into your own heart because you're hearing it on the inside at the same time. You speak wrong words, you're going to deceive your own heart. That's why don't speak words contrary to the word. Well, I don't think God will ever heal me. That's the worst thing you can say if you're wanting to see healing. You just sowed that in your heart. How are you going to believe in your heart for healing when you just said that and sowed that in your heart and it's coming out of your mouth? 
you just shut down everything that God's going to be able to do for you to bring healing. I don't see how God's ever going to do this for me. That's the wrong thing to say. Why don't you just speak it into being and watch God bring it into being? Put him to work instead of hindering him. Our tongue can hinder him. No, we want to speak right things. James 4, verse 11. Speak not evil one of another, brethren. We don't want to speak evil of one another. He that speaks evil of his brother and judges his brother speaks evil of the law and judges the law. <clears throat> and if thou judge the law, you're not a doer of the law, <clears throat> law, but a judge. So we don't want to speak evil of our brother, just putting him down. Now at the same time, does that mean we can't speak about a situation that we need to address if there's a problem and there's a reason for it? No, you can. Remember, Paul had to tell them about Dem Demetrius who did me much evil and Alexander the coppersmith who was doing things because he had to bring to their attention the evil things that were going on. He's not cutting the guy down. He's warning them, protecting them by bringing forth truth. If someone's teaching, just like if someone's teaching something wrong and you speak, you know, well, this person's teaching something wrong. Are we speaking evil of him just, just c c being negative for no reason? No. We're speaking things that need to be addressed because they're doing something contrary to the word and we've got to confront that and stop the people from speaking these kind of things or at least protect people so that they won't fall after the wrong teaching that's going forth. So just understand that, that you, that does not mean that you do not have to, con you, you don't confront uh, situations that need to be confronted. James chapter 2, verse 12. So speak ye and so do as they that shall be judged by the law of liberty. So we want to speak, we want to do, just like we're going to be judged by everything we say. If we think about that, boy, we'll be sure that we're speaking the right things. I don't want to be judged by speaking wrong things or doing wrong things. I want to be sure that I'm doing the right thing. And here's a scripture that really shows us why we are to come against people that aren't speaking wrong, doing right things. It says in Titus 1.10 that there's many unruly and vain talkers and deceivers, especially they of the circumcision, whose mouths must be stopped, who subvert whole houses, teaching things that they ought not for filthy lucre's sake. They had wrong motivations, all kinds of things. Those people need to be dealt with. It needs to be exposed. Are we cutting someone down or just judging them, at, you know, just putting them down? No. We're doing things in line with the gospel to stop this evil that's going forth to protect others. And so those are times, like we mentioned, that we've got to speak up. It is important that we learn to speak the things that God wants. Over in Psalms, Psalms 19, we see a scripture in verse 14 of what God says. And this is the attitude we should have. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. We want our words, the meditation of our heart, to be acceptable in his sight. And we've got to think about it. Are our words being acceptable? If we put a tape recorder to your back and you were carrying it around for the last 30 days, if we played it back, what would we hear? Would we hear acceptable words? Would you hear acceptable words? Or would you hear, I don't know, some of those, but some of them I don't want anybody to hear. <laughs> I wouldn't want God to hear. I wouldn't want anybody to hear because it wasn't too good. We want to realize that Everything's being written in the Spirit, so God knows everything. And therefore, we want our words of our mouth and meditation of the heart to be acceptable in His sight. Because remember, Jesus, as we saw in Hebrews, again, this is such a powerful scripture, important to understand. How did Jesus handle everything? Upholding all things by the spoken word, rhema, of His power. He dealt with everything by speaking forth the right words the Word of God, to deal with every situation that came His way. That's how we're going to deal with it. That's why we've got to get the Word in us and then speak the right Word. Don't speak the wrong Word. Speak the words that are going to minister life. They're going to put God in operation. They're going to release His power, release His authority, release what He wants. Don't ever speak from the flesh. You always want to speak in the Spirit. You can't speak in the words that, you might be, again, you might be speaking right words, but you're you're kind of putting someone down and con con condescending and they're not going to be able to receive it the way you're coming at them. How successful was that? It wasn't. So your motivation and how you're doing something is very important. 
We don't want to win the battle of the words or the, or, the, or the argument or whatever and then go nowhere as far as the effectiveness of it. We want to be sure that we're speaking what God wants. So don't deal with the things from a carnal perspective. Always, <clears throat> always speak things in line with what God wants. And we're going to close and go back with one scri scripture that we looked at before in James chapter 3. Remember, he had said about down here in verse 9 about how they were blessing God and cursing men. And he says, out of the same mouth proceeds blessing and cursing. My brethren, these things ought not so to be. They shouldn't be happening. We come back to verse 2. He says, in many things we offend all. If any man offend not in word, the same is a perfect man and able also to bridle the whole body. Otherwise, you, your words will keep your body in check. It'll keep things under control in your body if we'll speak the right things. We don't want to offend in word or stumble, fall, err, make a mistake, sin, essentially. This is all talking about in word. No, we want to speak in our speech. This is talking about the same as a perfect man. And we're to go on into perfection in the Lord. He wants us to grow up in all things. He wants us to learn to speak right things. So it's going to be very important. If you're going to conquer in life, you've got to conquer the tongue. You can't do it in your own ability. Only it can be done through God's ability and through His power. How's it going to happen? We're going to yield our tongue to Him. We're going to let our tongue be Lord, the Lord be Lord over our tongue. We're going to give Him everything we got. And we're going to put His Word first place. And we're going to study to think about how we're going to speak, what things we're going to speak. So we're going to speak words that are in line with the Word of God or are the Word of God or in line with something that's going to minister what God would have us to minister. So we're not going to speak things that are contrary. Otherwise, we would be giving place to the devil. Remember, angels hearken to the voice of the Word. Demons will hearken contrary to the Word. We can actually give place to the devil by the words of our mouth. We want to be sure that we bridle our tongue, speak the right things, and you conquer with your tongue. That's the way Jesus upheld all things. You're on your way to really controlling what's going on in the realm of the Spirit against you because you're going to be on top of everything. Everything that came against Jesus, he dealt with the things. All the temptations, everything he came, he spoke the Word of God. Anything that the enemies were trying to bring against him, he always dealt with it in the Spirit according to the Word. And he released the power of God, the authority. He released what God wants. And that's what God wants for you. Learn to speak the words and become, grow up to be a perfect man. That's what he wants for every one of us. Say this with me. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for your word. I am going to be a doer of this word. I will conquer the tongue. I understand. The tongue can set on fire the course of hell. It can be a destructive force. It is a member that if spoken from the flesh will be damaging for it releases things. Words are carriers. I'm going to pour the word of God into my lips so that I only speak words that are righteous, words that minister grace, Words that edify. Words that bring strength. Words that speak what God wants. In line with His Word. Speaking truth. I am going to speak right words. I thank you, Lord, that as I yield my tongue to speak what you say, and I speak in the Spirit according to the Word of God, that I will be a vessel for you to flow through because my words are going to glorify you and are going to release you to work through me. I make you Lord over my tongue and I will only speak right words. Thank you, Lord. I'm going to come to the place of offending not in word. So I grow up to be a perfect man, able to bridle the whole body. I will let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in your sight. And just as Jesus upheld all things by the spoken word of the power of God, I am going to uphold all things 
in my life by speaking the Word of God, releasing the power of God, and seeing you accomplish your will in every situation. Thank you, Lord. I'm going to conquer the tongue by speaking words in line with the Word of God from this day forward. In Jesus' name, amen. Now suppose you spoke a lot of wrong words. What do we do? We confess our sin. I confess the sin of speaking wrong words that did not minister life. I receive forgiveness and cleansing from all unrighteousness. I repent. And then you get in the Word and find out, well, what were the right words that I should have spoke? And then you get yourself prepared, ready to speak the right words the next time the situation comes up. Not so we make the same old mistake time and time again. Yeah, I spoke the wrong word, well, did it again. Yeah, got, got in, did it again, got right speaking these things I shouldn't have been speaking again. We don't want to be doing the same things again and again and again. So we want to learn from our mistakes, get the, get the word in a study to find out what's the best thing. How do I respond in a situation when someone does something? How do I respond if someone does some things that gets me angry or it makes me feel in the flesh, you know, of reacting and angry? Well, the Bible says, first of all, soft answer turns away wrath. Someone's angry at me. I'm not going to be getting into a shouting match or get into strife with them. I'm going to always think that. Soft answer turns away wrath. Soft answer. So I'm going to speak a soft answer in line with the Word of God. I'm going to study to speak what God wants so that I just don't blurt things out. And so I'm thinking about all these scriptures. I'm going to speak things that are excellent, things that are right, things that are true. At the same time, I realize the enemy's trying to get to my words. He's trying to rest my words. He's trying to get me to speak bitter words. He's trying to get me to speak before I even think and react. Therefore, I've got to learn to watch it. He also wants to be sure that my words are few before God, so I'm not just carrying on. I'm never going to be complaining, griping, murmuring. Remember, they got bitten of the serpents when they did so. Now, that's a big mistake. No, we want to understand that our words are so important because they are going to determine uh, what's going on in your life. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. So, start examining yourself. Start thinking about what you've been speaking. Start studying the Word and thinking about what's the right thing to say in this situation. What would God say? And then begin to speak those words and be prepared. And don't let yourself be blurting out, reacting, speaking negatives out of the flesh. As we le learn to conquer the tongue, we're going to go a long way towards conquering the enemy, releasing the power of God, seeing God be pleased with us, seeing the promises come to pass, and seeing God use us also to minister to people. We want to learn how to minister to people effectively so that we can have a good effect upon them to bring the word to them, help them come to repentance, help them to see the truth, instead of speaking in ways that you know, may not have been fruitful because of the way that we approach. So we want to be wise. So seek the Lord about all these things. Get the word. Get these scriptures before you and learn to start speaking in line with them and watch God start doing great things in your life. Father, we thank you and praise you for all you brought forth. We will be hearers and doers of your word and conquer the tongue. Thank you for all that you're going to accomplish as we speak your words and we praise you. There'll be much fruit as we hear and do this word in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God.